So let's see how we can create a native Android module in React Native. And we'll be using Java to do that. I'm going to start by creating a new React Native project by using npx React Native in it. Go ahead and install React Native. Once we have the project ready, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Android folder within Android Studio. So here as we can see, we have our app folder and we're going to be working mainly within our Java folder within our package name. To create our first module, we're going to head over to the official documentation. So here within Android native modules, basically when we create a new module, there are a couple of files that we need to import. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and copy this out and then modify it for our use case. So I'm going to just copy everything out from here back within Android Studio. Within our package folder, I'm going to create a new file. We'll start with a Java file and later we'll see how we can also create a Kotlin class. Here I'm going to call that calendar module like it is. As we can see, we've already got our package name on top here. I'm going to remove the class and paste in our code. So let's get rid of this package line which was copied in. And here we have our calendar module and we have the constructor. So in Android, when we create a new module, we need to extend this React context based Java module class. Here we'll set up a method called get name, which is required. And we'll return back the name of our module, which is calendar module in our case. Let's go ahead and create a method for our module. So we'll just say public void, create calendar event. And here we're just going to use log, which is available to us from android.util. And I'm going to log out calendar module. And I'll just say log from our calendar module. And whenever we want to expose a method, we need to pass in the add react method syntax here on top. So once we've created our module, we actually need to register the module in Android. So here within our package folder, I'm going to create a new Java class and let's call that my app package. Again, within this, we need to import in certain things. If we come down in our documentation, it tells us how we can register the module. So I'm just going to copy out this content. Back in our app, I'm going to paste that in here. Again, we already have the package name, so I'm going to remove that line. So this file basically imports the native module that we created. It then instantiates the calendar module within the create native modules function, and it then returns it as a list of native modules. When we create a new native module, we'll be able to add it to this same file right below this, and we won't have to create this file again. So just a quick recap, we created our calendar module within our calendar module.java class. We then instantiated it within the my app package class within this create native modules method. This method returns all the modules that we want to register in our app. So the last thing that's left is to actually register this module within our main application file. So within main application, we need to jump into the get packages method. And here we can use this line of code, which is commented to add our package. So here we'll say packages.add. Within this, we'll say new and we'll pass in our my app package. So now our app has access to the native module that we created. So make sure to just go ahead and build out your project and we should be good to go. So now let's head back to our React Native project and import in the module we created. So here within the app.js, I'm just going to remove everything and just create a functional component. Let's just call that app. Make sure everything is working by running it on our simulator. So as we can see, our app is working. Let's just go ahead and import in our native module. So I'm going to say import native modules from React Native. Let's extract out our calendar module and let's just log it out. So we'll say console.log calendar module. Let's open up the debugger. And here we should see our calendar module logged out. It has that create calendar event we created and by default it has the get constants method. Let's jump back into Visual Studio Code. Here we'll also say calendar module and call our create calendar event. Save that out. Just rerun our app and if we jump back into Android Studio, if we open up the logcat and here if we search for calendar, we can see that logged from our calendar module, which we had passed in to our calendar module is displayed here. So just like in iOS, Android has logged this out in the Android terminal, but we want to pass this data back to the React Native side. So let's try and pass this data back from the native side to the JavaScript side. So the first way we can do that is by using a callback. So the callback needs a data type of callback, which is available from the Facebook library. And here we'll call it callback. And then here below our log method, we'll say callback dot invoke. And here within this, let's say data returned from native calendar module. I'm just going to rebuild the app again. Let's head back to Visual Studio code. And here where we were calling create calendar event, we know that this is going to return a callback. 
So let's get the data return by saying result and let's lock that out. Let's just reload the app again. Let's open up the debugger. And as we can see, we're getting this message back now, data returned from native module. Another way we can pass back data is by using promises. So again, enter Android Studio. Here I'm just gonna create a new method. Let's call it create calendar promise. The data type it needs is promise, which is again available to us from the React library. And let's call the argument promise as well. Again, we need to pass in React method. Here we'll open up a try and catch block. In the catch block, we'll say exception error. So let's assume we were able to create a calendar event. So what we'll say is promise dot resolve. And let's just pass back data returned from promise. And if we get an error, let's say promise dot reject. And we'll say error returned from promise. And pass in the error. Let's make that double quote so that it stops reporting an error. Now let's just reload the app again. Back in VS code. I'm just gonna create a new button here. Let's say calendar event promise. In the on press, let's say create calendar event promise. And let's create this method. So we'd say const create calendar event promise is equal to, we have to mark this method as async. Then here we'd say try catch, let's catch the error. And we'll await our result by saying await calendar module dot create calendar promise. Let's store that in a variable result and log that out if it's successful. Otherwise, we'll log out our error. So we'll say console.log error. So we have our button here. Let's click it. Let's open up our debugger. And as we can see, we've got data returned from promise here. So the last thing we'll see is how we can add listeners on our JavaScript site for events that come to us from the native side. See here, coming down to the event section, we need to import in this particular line here, which is the device event manager module. And we also need this send event method. So I'm just gonna copy out everything till the send event method. Come back here, let's paste that in here. Obviously we don't need these two lines. All we need is this import for the device event manager module. So I'm gonna cut that and move that here to the top. And here, instead of the writable map, I'm just gonna pass back an integer so that we can keep a track of the number of times we created a calendar event. Then we utilize a React context. We get access to the module that is gonna help us emit out the data. And then we call emit with the event name and the params. So I'm gonna save that out. Since we're gonna be calling this from inside this Java class, we actually don't need to add at React method here because we're not gonna be exposing this. Instead, we'll come up here where we're calling create calendar promise. Once it's successful, I'm gonna say send event. We'll pass a react context by using get application context. And for the event name, I'm gonna pass in event count. And for the params, we'll just pass back a variable called event count, which we'll just create. So coming up here, I'm gonna create a private variable called event count and start by setting it to zero. So now that we've set that up, Let's go ahead and rebuild our app. Back in Visual Studio Code, once we call calendar module dot create calendar promise, obviously we're logging out the result here. But along with that, we'll add a listener which will help us log out the count. So in order to add listeners to our native module, we have to go ahead and import in the native event emitter from React Native. Then I'm just gonna remove these two lines from here. Then I'm gonna create a new event emitter using the native event emitter and call the native modules dot calendar module. And actually, since we're already accessing a calendar module, we can just pass that in directly. Then within our app class, let's create a use effect. Here I'm gonna say event emitter dot add listener. The event type we're looking for is event count. And then we get back the data, which we'll just call event count. And let's console.log that out. Within our return method here, we'll just say event emitter to remove all listeners. And we don't have any dependencies here. If we save that out, let's just reload our app. Let's open up our debugger. Let's try and create our event. So first we get data returned from promise. You get the value of zero. And that's because we actually were not incrementing the value. So we'll head back to Android Studio again. 
And here when we pass back event count, let's also increase the value of event count by one. So we'll say plus equal to one. We'll have to reload our app once. Back in our debugger, as we see when we create the event, we get one, create it again, we get two. And similarly, we can keep monitoring the value. So as you can see, this is a very simple way of creating a native module in Java. We created a calendar module. We have to get the name of the module. We created a method of the module. And then we saw the three ways of passing back data. One was using the callback, one was using the promise, and we can also add events using our send event.